you're enjoying Racing World, it's brought to you by Perspective Group. It's your global motorsport podcast show brought to you in conjunction with Race Control Magazine. Welcome to a special edition of Racing World. Had this chance today, so it's just a little podcast for you to catch up with SVG and Scott McLaughlin on Zoom. Uh, Made for a very early start, actually, SVG was at 3 a.m. New Zealand time and Scott McLaughlin was followed up at 5 a.m. New Zealand time, so not the best way to start the day, but the chance to talk to great New Zealand talent, that's for sure. Lots and lots of atmosphere around SVG at Indianapolis Motor Speedway this weekend, of course, in the truck at the Indianapolis Raceway Park, which is some 20 minutes away from uh, the main speedway, so it'd be great to see how that plays itself out. So first up was SVG, Uh, a colleague of mine, Bruce Martin from uh, NBC and Forbes in the US was the first to kick off questions to him. Had to play this one to you because Bruce makes reference to the fact that we come from New England, which of course is a state in America, not New Zealand, which is in the South Pacific, as most of you know, and Shane's reaction to that was pretty cool. So here's what Bruce had to say uh, to Shane, and I was talking about McLaughlin being in the series uh, with him or racing with McLaughlin in, in the future and how he felt about that. It'd be cool to have him join. He should have uh, done a wild card this weekend. But uh, yesterday he was at the simulator when I was. So I, um, they invited me in to sit in on his session and got to listen for a bit, watch how he was driving and, and how that side of thing works. And it was very cool to see. And it's um, yeah, it's awesome to be in a similar world to him again. We went for lunch on my last trip and, he was just uh, so encouraging, I guess, to come over here and, and give it a crack. So, yeah, um, it's it's awesome to be be around him again. And, and hopefully this weekend, I've, uh, I haven't seen an IndyCar race since they were in surface in 2008, I think it was. So it's going to be awesome to go and watch him and, and Scott Dixon race as well. And also, what, what do you see as, uh, you know, New England's not a very big country, but there's a lot of great racing talent. What do you see as the reason for that? Oh, New Zealand? Yep. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know, we, we're we pretty competitive in our, our junior categories and yeah, like on the world stage, we've done done so well in, in America and, and Europe as well. So it's awesome to be helping add to that, not just in supercars, but now in the American side of things too. So yeah, we do pretty pretty good us up Kiwi. Great reaction there from Shane. And of course, New Zealand is doing very well at the moment. And I think that there is more and more to come as we talk about nearly every week on the show. There's so much young talent out there and there's so much growing talent. And now we have this influx of uh, New Zealanders making America home. And it'll be great to see how this all plays itself out. There's lots and lots of stories to come, that's for sure. Um, And uh, I liked his reaction to Bruce too and reminding him it was kind of New Zealand, not New, New England. My question, however, was how he was going to find racing the truck at Raceway Park. Uh, I've been there many times, watched the Silver Crown cars there, uh, watched midgets there on the asphalt, watched USF 2000 with uh, Hunter McElroy, Jacob Douglas, uh, even Billy Fraser uh, when he was in USF 2000. And uh, it's an interesting place. It's a tight little oval, um, not a lot of give and take. And certainly with the trucks on there, there, there won't be that much space. And uh, it was good to be able to talk to Shane about how he felt that that would go. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, don't think like that so much. I think it was just a cool opportunity. Obviously, it's it's Ross's truck normally, and he's not allowed to drive in the in the playoff races. So yeah, it's just a good while I'm here, go and go and uh, jump in. Justin, put no pressure on it, no expectations. Just go out and have have some fun, which would be cool and. Uh, yeah, meeting those guys in the truck team and, and learning how to approach the weekend, I guess. Um, Marcus Ambrose sent me a whole list of stuff last night. He's obviously got experience at that track, but he's gone through exactly what I've gone through, transitioning into the ovals. So all the advice you sent me is it's a lot to digest and, and take in, but um, hopefully all that advice helps. And, you know, uh, his biggest thing was, on Thursday, on at three o'clock on on the Friday, the track is going to be completely different to racing at nine o'clock at night and under lights. So you know, just got to be adaptable and not get frustrated when it's hot and slick during the day, and keep building up and learning. And but obviously, you're going to be in a pack learning. It looks like it's pretty close and tight racing around there, so it's going to be tough to get in your own ear and and feel comfortable. But um, yeah, expectations wise and pressure, I don't. I don't have much on myself, but 
obviously I hope it goes well and I'd, I'd love to be there at the end complete, completing all the laps and coming out of it straight, learning as much as I can. Well, I think SVG, like always, goes into this event and particularly running at Raceway Park with open eyes. But one thing that you know about him is that he takes it all in and his ability to process all that information uh, makes for him to be a very strong driver, as we well know. So he's got the double header Friday night at Raceway Park and then off to the road course at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Uh, some great names in this race this weekend. It's the best publicity NASCAR could ever have. And of course, for Roger Penske and the team at uh, IMS, the doubleheader weekend with uh, IndyCar and NASCAR there. Fan favourite. I, I hope that the fans support it because this is a chance to see some of the world's greatest races on probably one of the best road courses around uh, that, you know, just is going to provide great racing. And uh, I just, I, I really, really hope that the crowd support that. There seems to be a lot of interest. I know there's a lot of Kiwis up there right now. Uh, big shout out to many of them. Um, Shane Davey mentioned to me this morning that the former sprint car race, Kerry Jones is there, camped up in his driveway. So it'll be good to see Kerry's reaction uh, watching these things. And I know that he was going to be at Knoxville for the, the sprint cars and, and things. But, you know, this just shows you how much pulling power these Kiwi drivers have got now. And now in particular, Shane Van Gisbergen. So moving on to McLaughlin. And of course, the, the second step of the podium uh, last week in Nashville. Great performance again from him, and uh, I'm sure there is more to come. And he's in this championship chase, which I think is going to end up being ultimately a battle for second, which will comprise of Newgarden, McLaughlin himself, and of course Scott Dixon. And that, with the remaining races, no one really is stronger than anyone other than maybe Newgarden at Gateway on the Oval in a couple of weeks' time. But it's going to be a very, very tight battle for second in the championship, because I think that Alex Palau now is going to streak away with this win. So... Time will tell. But for me, my question with McLaughlin, who had a bit of trouble with Zoom this morning, so uh, you only get to hear him rather than see him. Uh, it was just a connection problem that he had. Uh, but the, the question to him really was about the differential between when IndyCar was at IMS in May versus being here now. Uh, if it's Kiwi or Australia, let's go to David Turner from uh, David Turner Racing World. I'm sure you got a couple questions. Go ahead, Dave. Thanks very much, Dave. Hey, Scott. Um, one of the things I was interested in uh, from a driver's point of view, um, it's not often that you get to go back to a circuit twice in a season and you, you're obviously back at the road course this weekend. Does the track evolve from how it was in May to how it's going to be this weekend? And does things like, you know, the, the temperature difference that we had in May to what is now the height of summer impact on, on how the car performs there as well? A little bit, and it's also a little bit on the you know track usage side. I think we're going to be one of the first people on the track, and there's not much support categories apart from NASCAR uh, on the track, so the rubber is probably going to be down. Um, we yeah, so it's it's a little bit different in that regard and how you prepare. But you know, like you said, we've been there before and tried it, so it's um, it's you know I feel like we've got a really good handle of where we want the setup to be. Um, but yeah, certainly um, it's it's going to be. An interesting weekend if if we don't you know get on top of the car straight away and practice one. Um, the temperatures are a little bit different, like you said, a little bit hotter um, this weekend than it was in May. But thankfully, it wasn't too cold in May, so we've sort of got a nice little base there. And then just touching on the the NASCAR thing just for a second. Obviously, there's a lot of talk about Shane, and and rightfully so. But um, you know, you know this, this competitor as well, and, and Brody Kostecki coming in this weekend. That it's a big opportunity for him as well. That's sort of going a little bit under the radar, mainly due to Shane, isn't it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I think Shane's efforts at Chicago um, was always going to put anything under the radar, but um, Brody's very good. Um, he's very good with the car, engineering wise. He's very, very talented. So I fully expect him to be okay. Um, I think, I guess, you know, he's going with a car that. You know, basically won last year too. So I think you know, Redick won last year in RCR thing. I think he could quite easily have the pace to win as well. Um, so it's going to be uh, super, uh, super interesting how he goes. And I think Kobayashi would be pretty quick as well. Yeah, no, good point. Um, well, enjoy uh, the weekend. Hope it goes well for the Thirsty Threes and uh, enjoy the road trip with the dog on uh, Sunday as well. Yeah, I don't know if I'll enjoy it, but I'll have good company. That's the main thing. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no sweat. See you yeah. soon, too, as well. Thank you. And 10 hours worth. Uh, a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of get to know me time with the dog. That's good.
And for those of you wondering, the reference to the dog is the fact that on uh, Sunday straight or Saturday straight after the race, Scott's flying to New York to pick up his wife Carly and their dog, and then they're driving from New York back down to Charlotte where they reside. Uh, and he's got a 10 hour road trip ahead of him and he'll be listening to the NASCAR race on the radio. So that's the references to the dog for any of those, you that were wondering. Great to catch up with those two Kiwi guys this morning. Yes, it was an early start, but well worth it. Great to share it with you. And here's to a great another motorsport weekend for the Kiwis, no matter where they are around the world. And we'll catch up with you again on Racing World next week when we review the IMS races and uh, bring you all the news from there. Till then, take care.